Hello and welcome to the third scripting tutorial for the minigames game. So, I know it's been like two months since I have done the pr last tutorial. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly review on what we've got so far and then we can move on quickly. So, in the give values section we should have all the uh, leader stats values, so which is just points and then there's a value, um, a boole boolean value called in-game and what this does is basically when your in-game value is on true it means that you're still playing the game when you die this in-game value will be set to false which I'll be showing you how to do soon um, and when you go to the main script and when, when the round ends basically it goes through each player uh, checks if the in-game value is still true if it is still true then you will get your points if it's false then that means you've died in the minigame and you won't be receiving any points okay and that's pretty much what that does and this is how your give values um, script should look like uh, if your script values I mean if your give values script looks a bit different then that's probably because I've changed a few things um, like when I wasn't actually recording this so make sure it looks like this and you should know what it does if you don't know what it does and if you've got no clue what this does then I advise that you watch my other tutorials uh, my beginners and advanced series uh, to help you along the way anyways so let's get uh, moving so I have actually added a function um, which removes the plates in the disappearing plates game uh, and I've done this off camera um, just to see if it actually does work and yes it does work so I can now explain how it works so um, okay I want to change this time to something else uh, if game chosen dot name equals disappearing plates so we're just checking because we've got a game chosen um, variable game chosen clone uh, which we've used to teleport the map to the to the workspace if the name of this um, game is called disappearing plates then we're going to play our game uh, time till game ends let's call it that because I don't like it when it goes blue so time till game ends equals 20 um, so that gives us 20 seconds in our game in our round and what we're going to do is we're going to have a for loop here uh, counting down until the game ends and each second we're going to call this remove plate function so if you can just make a remove plate function just an empty function at the top of your script um, and call it here um, every second when the clock ticks uh, so we can move up here here's my function this is what your function should look like after I've finished explaining it so as I explain it you can just like write it as you go or you can listen to me and you know gather all the information you need and then write it as one, once I've finished so plates equals game dot workspace dot disappearing plates dot children blah 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 so this is basically getting all the plates uh, inside our disappearing plates model uh, which means it's getting every single one of these parts all of these parts that I'm highlighting right now um, <coughs> are all the plates in the in the game that you stand on and we want to make these plates dis disappear every second okay and what the script does is it makes two plates disappear every second so random number one and random number two are going to be two different random numbers to and basically we're selecting two different random plates that we want to disappear and the reason I've put random number two uh, equals math.random one to plates in in this while loop is because I don't want random number two to be the same number as random number one I want random number two to be different from that random number one so what we do is we pick the first random number first okay this is what we do we pick the first random number and then what we do is we just assign random number two a random you know, any number like I just said one and then in a while loop we're going to keep assigning a random number to random number two until random number two is not equal to random number one anymore so say random number one is equal to five and in the while loop we pick uh, five say um, yeah in the while loop we pick five as the random number here uh, if it carries on to keep picking five which is the same as random number one then we're going to carry on looping until it picks something else okay and that's pretty much what it's doing um, okay here I should I should actually say random number two equals random one and the reason I'm doing this is just so that it actually enters the loop 
okay and the loop condition is whilst random number one is equal to random number two and if random number one is equal if random number two is equal to random number one just change it the other way around then we're going to carry on looping okay doesn't really matter which way around it is but anyway um now that we can go past that plate chosen equals uh, the plates which is the um this variable here uh, it's actually an array of all the different plate or all the if different objects um part objects in in the plates model so all these plates are inserted into this variable here as an array or as a list should we call it i think they call it a table in lua now I haven't done lua in a while so yeah, into this table here um and now we're selecting the random um the random part to make disappear uh which we do later on in this in this function so you can see how i'm using the random number 1 and random number 2 variables to select uh, two random plates and now what we're going to do is we're going to do a for loop um and this is just a for loop to make the transparency go down this is just for effect uh so we're decreasing the transparency um by 0 0.05 uh, every one twentieth of a second of both of the plates that we've chosen, okay, until they're completely transparent. And now that they're completely transparent, uh, after the for loop ends, we can just destroy both of these plates. And that is how this function works. It picks two random plates and it makes the transparency go down uh, until they're completely transparent. Um, if you don't get how this for loop works, watch my previous tutorials. Um, and then this bit here destroys them and boom it works so let's go back down to the function now you can see every second we remove two plates by calling this remove plate function so if you want to go ahead and write this um, then yep make it work so now let's exit the script and let's have a test see if it works actually no I've, I've already tested it myself and it does work if it doesn't work for you then have a look at the output and you should be able to kind of guess why it doesn't work from the output by the time you're watching these tutorials these um this mini game tutorial you should already be like really good scripters already so i assume that you're all really good scripters already now that you're watching this tutorial so you shouldn't really be getting stuck with things okay you can see how the plates actually remove themselves really fast and really rapidly so it's actually quite a struggle for me to move um, if you want more plates to be removed by the end of the game then all you've got to do is uh, let's, have a look. let's exit the server all you've got to do is go back to the main script and set the time till game ends to something like I don't know 25 or 30 so that more plates are removed so you've got more time to remove more plates so okay that's all you've got to do uh, if you want less plates to be removed obviously decrease this number here until the time until the game ends okay so now that's done I'm gonna be talking to you about the points process now so what I want to do is quickly take your disappearing plates cut it and paste it into the workspace uh, what I'm gonna do is um, let's just select a part any part and blob it underneath the actual model okay extend this part this is basically going to be the part where if the players actually touch it then their in-game value gets set to false because this means that they've died if, if, if a player touches this part it basically means they've died or they've 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 fallen out of the game okay whoops can't select it now. There we go. Let's just put that a bit lower. Lovely. And that should be higher now. Right. And let's make it a little bit bigger, just in case somebody tries to jump off the edge and false fake their way to winning. Right. There we go. If you want this part to be a box around the actual disappearing plates um, game, then you can. Just in case a player gets like flinged across the map and they die and their in-game value does not get set to false but I'm just going to make a little a little base plate underneath the in, underneath the game so what I'm going to do now is um, where is it I need to cut that and paste it into the 
disappearing place model like that and we're going to name it uh, I don't know killer or something like that uh, you can name it whatever you want I'm going to insert a script into it and we're going to have an untouched event so script dot parent dot touched whoops touched uh, connect function blah 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 here we go and we need a parameter the part that actually hits this brick um, we're going to test if the humanoid is there so anything could hit the brick if a car came and you know fell down from anywhere out of random and hit the brick the car is not a a character is it so we need to check if there's a humanoid inside the inside the model that touches this brick if there is then we're pretty certain that it's going to be a player so humanoid equals hit dot parent uh, find first child humanoid okay so say the player's left leg hits the brick um, we're going to take the parent of the left leg which is the player's character and we're going to search for a humanoid inside this character if there is a humanoid then that player is obviously a character and or the model that touched it is a character and we can try to get the player from it so if humanoid then so if, if humanoid is true uh, if it's not true that means there's no humanoid and it's not a character so if humanoid then player equals game dot players uh, game dot players get player from character and we can just say hit dot parent because hit dot parent is our character okay and now what we can do is we can say in game equals player find first child we can't just assume that they've got an in game value because what if the, the give value script has failed for some odd reason and <clears throat> there's no in game or in val in game value inside the inside the player then this script will error and it won't work for anybody else so we need to actually search for an in game um, value by finding first child if there is an in game value if in game then now we can set in game value to false but if there's not then we're going to do nothing because that player does not have an in game um, value okay I think that works now and we can test it so before we go on test uh, what I'm going to do is uh, just set this brick to transparent there we go now no one can see that ugly brick and what we're going to do now is we're going to go to main script and we're going to work on the points now so once the game ends which is just there um, game ended h.text equals giving points to players who won okay and we're going to wait three seconds after we've given all the points away so we need a for loop for iv in pairs do and we're going to go through all the players in the game so game dot players get players okay so for every single player inside this game we're going to say in game equals uh, v which is the pl which is each player as we go through the loop for every loop that it does v changes uh, into the different player so v dot uh, in actually no v find first child in game okay if in game then and the reason we're doing another search here is if a player has just just joined the game and their values haven't loaded yet if by coincidence we are actually giving points to everybody in the game and somebody joins at that moment then they're not going to have that in-game value there yet and our main script is going to crash okay we don't want it to crash so we're going to make a check to see if they actually do have that in-game um, value so if in-game then um, leader stats equals um, by this time we can be pretty certain that they've got their leader stats 
because leader stats and points are given to the player before the in-game is given to the player okay so they're going to have their leader stats and points before the in-game so we don't need to do another check if they've got their leader stats because we know that they've got their leader stats because we've already checked for the in-game value so we can just say now that v dot leader stats dot points dot value equals I did a comma there whoops equals this plus uh, 10 points uh, so yeah actually no let's give them 100 points we're gonna give each player 100 points every single time they win okay and that's how you do that so let's just make sure this actually works by exiting off the script uh, let's I'm gonna save it and uh, do test start with two players and it's gonna start a server with two players okay All right, let's hope it works we're going to make one player die and hopefully I'm going to make one player survive uh, deciding what game to play it looks like there's a slight error uh, 31 here we go um, workspace dot line 31 uh, bad second argument to random okay let's have a look what's happened let's have a look line 31 ran game equals ah here we go it's because I forgot to put the disappearing plates model back into the mini games model in the lighting and also what you can do now is instead of using lighting you can actually use um, replicated storage and I think this replicated storage was made to replace lighting because you know I don't I don't think it's efficient to be putting models into lighting anymore so if you want you can use replicated storage instead of lighting it's pretty much the same thing instead of saying game dot lighting just say game dot replicated storage um, and yeah it's pretty much the same thing uh, I'm not going to move to replicate storage though because I've already started using lighting and I'd have to change the entire script for that I'd have to change each word that says lighting to replicate storage so I'm going to carry on using lighting but if you want use replicated storage it's better I, I use it for my new games now okay so when it loads lovely minigame chosen disappearing plates Okay. Hopefully I'm gonna make one of one of my characters survive if I'm any good at this game. Let's just I'm gonna stand in these four corners. Oh no. It's going fast. It's going fast. Oh player player one. Uh what's happened to player one? I know. I didn't make it anti cancolide. You know that killer brick? I forgot to make it anti cancolide. So now you can go through it and that's good. So let's just test that script because I don't I think it should have made player one's um in game value go to false, but it didn't. Uh, player find first child in game. That is the name of the value, right? Yes. Uh, if in game, in game dot value equals false. Okay. Um. <coughs> oh, I know. In the main script, we just checked to see if they had an in game value. We didn't actually check to see if the in game value was false. So let's do another check. If in game dot value equals true, then give them the points. There we go. There we go. Now, if the in-game value is only true, not false, then they will get points. Lovely. So let's uh, test it again. Let's <laughs> see if it works now. And I think now you've got all the skills to pretty much do whatever you want with the game. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over the script, and I'm going to go over adding more mini games to your script. And once that's done, I think this should be the last ser uh, last tutorial in the series. Um, I will be making more scripting tutorials as well. I haven't I haven't given up yet. <laughs> well, I'm going to make this character die, 
and I'm going to play with this character. Okay, let, let's hope that I survive this so that I can t show you how it works. Right, three more seconds, come on. <coughs> Lovely. Player one survived and player two didn't. So player one gets 100 points and player two does not. Yes, it works. Right. Okay, now that it works. Um, <coughs> right. I'm going to begin by showing you how to add more mini games now. So, let's see. Uh, let's go up to here. Deciding what game to play. So, random game equals math.random 1 to the number of mini games. At the moment, we've only got one mini game, so it will always be one. If we have two mini games, then we have a chance of picking the second mini game. And let's say that the second mini game is something like Lava Mountain, where there's a mountain and lava comes down and kills everybody that goes past it. Um, we need a separate script for that, don't we? So say we put a script into the Lava Mountain minigame. I'm going to quickly copy this um, just as an example and call it Lava Mountain. Okay, um, and I'm going to delete everything. Let's pretend that there's, there's stuff inside there for the meantime. And I'm going to add a script to it. The script will do nothing, just saying. Um, let's call it Lava Mountain Script. Now, if you've already got the scripting skill, then you should be able to do to actually script in another mini game um, just by me t briefly telling you how to actually do it. Uh, I'm not going to go over it completely because then I'm just going to be giving you all the answers. Um, but anyway, let's go to main script and see what happens. Okay, if game dot chosen dot name equals disappearing plates, then yeah, that's fine. We can call our remove plate function each second. Um, however. Uh, else if, whoops, I can't even spell now. Else if, if, okay, um, game.chosen.name equals uh, lava mountain, uh, then we want to do something different, okay? So, what we're going to do is, oops, uh, that was my chair squeaking, if you heard that. Um, we're going to do uh, game chosen clone dot lava mountain script dot disabled equals false and let's go to our lava mountain script now just check the disabled box because uh, we don't want the game to play yet we want it to play when we tell it to play in the main script okay so now that the game has enabled now that the main script has enabled this lava mountain script what we can do is we can have a little while loop and if you go to your main script and <coughs> insert a second value into or another a value into it, a boolean value, into a boolean value, and let's name it next or round finished. Lovely. So let's go back here um, to the while loop. We can say while script dot round finished dot value. Um, equals false uh, do I think that's how you do while loops in Lua I can't remember now uh, yeah it is so we can say do wait uh, one second and so the main script will just keep you know looping every second until this value here round finished is equal to true and the only way to say that to true is in the lava mountain script we're going to in the lava mountain script um, you're going to have all your stuff like your countdown, your spawning of the of the lava bricks, um, your killing of the lava bricks. So when the lava brick kills someone, it sets their in-game value to false. Uh, things like that, you know. And then at the end of the round, when the timer finishes, we're going to go to the main script through this lava mountain script and say, main script dot round finished equals true. We're done now. We're done with the script. We don't want to carry on with the round. We're done. So you can now move on to the next round. And once that value goes to true, we're going to break out of this while loop. We're then going to reset this script dot round finish dot value uh, to false, and we're going to move on to say game ended, giving points to people who won, and then we're going to move on to the next round. And that's another way of doing it by doing it, putting a script into the model, and you know making the script do everything for the main script. Okay, uh, you can do either way. Um, I probably suggest this second script because 
I don't know, it's just the way I like doing it. You can do either way though. So that is how to do that. Um, if there are, if there is anything extra that I would need to add to this uh, tutorial, then I will. Um, but for the meantime, we're going to put an end to this series. Um, I will carry on making different, you know, d d different tutorials um, in the advanced series. So keep an eye out for that. Make sure you subscribe and like the video to encourage me to make more. <laughs> okay, awesome. So I will see you in the next tutorial then, I guess. Goodbye. I hope you learned a lot from this one.